Do you know how much you can control your chances of getting cancer? One of the biggest dangers to your health. Cancer took nearly 10 million lives around the world in 2022, and it affects 40% of us during our lifetimes. It's critical to understand how we can protect ourselves, and the choices that we make massively impact on our risks. While our genes play a role, a recent global study found that half of all cancer deaths in men, and almost 40% in women, come from things that we can prevent. In this video, I'll explain what those factors are, including the top three that we absolutely need to focus on. I'll show you the research on their dramatic impact and give you some practical steps that you can start right away. These are steps that I use with my patients in the clinic, and I'll also tell you about some new discoveries that are changing how we can find cancer early when it's easy to cure and before symptoms appear. So how can we control whether we get cancer? Well, the smart way is to avoid seven things that research links to cancer. All are important, but the last three that we'll talk about have the biggest impact, and the very last one might surprise you. The first one probably won't though, avoid too much sun. Sunlight can hurt our skin cells, that's why too much sun can cause skin cancer, one of the most common types of cancer in the United States. Research shows that people who work outside have a 60% higher chance of getting skin cancer. So to protect our skin from sun, we can do two things. First, we can spend less time in the sun, especially during the middle of the day when it's strongest. But the second and more important is to wear sunscreen and protective clothes when we're outside. One study found that using sunscreen every day can lower the risk of certain types of skin cancer. Today, it's best to use sunscreen with SPF 50 or higher. So I personally use Beauty of Josen sunscreen. It's SPF 50 and it doesn't contain any of the 12 flagged ingredients that the FDA wants more safety data on. It also uses new filters such as bemetrezinol which don't get absorbed through the skin and I'm not affiliated in any way. But if I didn't have access to that sunscreen, I would use CeraVe 100% mineral sunscreen SPF 50. While it can leave a white film when applying it, I would personally prefer to use a mineral based sunscreen rather than one of the other sunscreens that have ingredients that need further study. The second thing we can do is exercise. Our bodies need to move. Exercising makes our immune system stronger, it lowers insulin levels and has other health benefits that are associated with reduction in cancer risks. Exercise acts like a shield for our cells, keeping them strong against threats. A recent study followed over 750,000 people for 10 years. Those who exercised hard for 7.5 to 15 hours each week had a much lower risk of 7 out of 15 cancers studied, including colon and breast cancer. Another study with 1.44 million adults showed a lower risk of 13 types of cancers in people who exercised regularly, including a more than 20% drop in the risk of 7 cancers. Now I know that starting to exercise can be a bit challenging, so here's what I tell my patients. Find an activity that you like doing so that it doesn't feel like a chore. If you love nature, try walking. If you like music, try dancing. Or if you enjoy listening to books or podcasts, combine it with jogging or biking so that it doesn't feel that we're exercising. Aim for 30 minutes a day, ideally five days a week. So personally, I love to go for a run, or if the weather is bad, I use my exercise bike at home, which I bought secondhand for $60. But what if you're super busy? Well, here's a tip. On busy days, I do something called exercise snacks. These are short bursts of exercise throughout the day, like push-ups, sit-ups, or other bodyweight exercises. Even at the clinic, during a quick 15-minute paperwork break, I'll fit in some exercise, so these snacks can add up to make a massive difference to our health. The third thing we can do to guard against cancer is to eat healthy foods, and I'll go through the exciting advancements on how to catch cancer early later in the video. It makes sense that feeding our bodies well helps our cells stay strong and handle any damage. Doctors and scientists agree on this, and a big review of many studies found that eating healthy foods is linked to a lower risk of certain types of cancers. So what foods should we eat? Well first, let's talk about what we should avoid. Some foods increase our cancer risks, so for example processed meats. Many studies have found a link between eating these processed meats and a higher risk of colon cancer. Processed foods in general are best avoided. It includes things that we all know, chips, sodas, instant soups, frozen meals, and other convenience foods. 
A recent study from France found that eating a lot of ultra-processed foods was linked to higher risks of cancers, especially breast cancer. On the other hand, research supports the powerful positive effects of a healthy diet. So you've probably heard about the Mediterranean diet, but there are many other healthy diets that we can use. The Mediterranean diet in particular, it focuses on eating lots of vegetables, nuts, whole grains, fish, and extra virgin olive oil. And a massive study found that following this diet can lower the risk of dying from any cause by 9% and reduce the risk of cancer deaths by 6%. I also make sure to eat a high protein diet to maximize the benefits of exercise. And though the area of diet can seem complicated, the key things to remember are really simple. Avoid processed meats, sugary foods, and sugar in general, as well as processed foods. Eat plenty of fresh vegetables, whole fruits, whole grains, along with protein sources like fish, chickpeas, beans, and nuts. Foods rich in fiber are wonderful for our health, but if you do have irritable bowel syndrome, make sure to see your doctor because a high fiber diet might not be the best path for you. And to make sure that I reach the recommended daily intakes of all of the vitamins and minerals every day, I take microvitamin. But just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. The fourth way we can lower our cancer risk is to avoid drinking alcohol. Why? Alcohol can change our hormones and irritate our cells. It also appears to help other cancer-causing substances to spread more easily in our bodies. One large study in Korea found that people who drank more alcohol had a higher risk of getting cancer. On the other hand, those who drank less had a lower risk. Drinking alcohol is especially linked to cancers of the mouth, throat, liver, and breast. So how much alcohol is safe? Well, unfortunately, even small amounts can increase our cancer risk. Research from the American Institute for Cancer found that drinking just one drink a day can raise the risk of several common cancers. Their advice? It's best not to drink any alcohol. Now we come to the final three factors, numbers 5, 6, and 7, each of which are among the most significant for limiting our cancer risks, and you don't want to miss any of these. The fifth risk factor has been estimated to cause an incredible 40% of all cancers in the US. The risk factor I'm talking about is obesity. Excess body fat is like a ticking time bomb, releasing harmful signals that can lead to chaos in the body. It gives off signals that can cause inflammation and increase growth hormones, telling our cells to divide more often and raising the chances of cancer cells forming. A study in the UK found that excess weight is linked to 41% of uterine cancers and over 10% of gallbladder, kidney, liver, and colon cancers. Another study with over 1.7 million people found that those who have a high BMI or body mass index. When we're young, it increases our cancer risk later in life. And we can have even more confidence in the connection when we have a look at what happens when people lose significant amounts of weight. A study from 2007 found that people who had gastric bypass surgery, which helps people to lose a lot of weight, had a 60% lower risk of dying from cancer. So if you're not currently overweight, these scientific findings can give us powerful motivations to keep a healthy weight. But if you are currently overweight, I know that losing weight can be a challenge, even when you know the risks. But notice that there's something about the risk factors that we've already looked at. Being more active and eating a healthy diet are both powerful ways to work towards a healthy weight. So avoiding obesity isn't something extra that we need to do. It happens naturally if we focus on moving more and eating well. But if our weight is still too high, we can talk to our doctor about medications like Ozempic to help us lose weight. Medications are not a bad thing. It's just another tool to help us stay healthy. And no, because this always comes up in the comment section, I have never received money from a pharma company. Not only is that unethical, but it's also illegal in New Zealand. The sixth risk factor is smoking. Smoking makes us more likely to get lung cancers and at least 15 other types of cancer. It was responsible for 21% of all cancer deaths around the world in 2011. It's the single most important preventable cause of cancer. So what can we do? Well, clearly it's best not to start smoking. But if we do smoke, cutting back can still help a lot. One study found that smoking 15 cigarettes a day instead of 20 cigarettes lowered the risk of lung cancer by a whopping 20%. Incredibly, research has shown that the positive effects of quitting smoking show up almost immediately, within two weeks of stopping smoking. Smokers can expect to have more energy, feel healthier, and improve their breathing. So how can we quit? Well, obviously it's difficult, as nicotine is incredibly addictive, but it's definitely possible. 
So here are some tips. It helps to know who or what motivates you to become smoke free. Change up your routine to help avoid the triggers that make you want to smoke. And when you feel the urge to smoke, many people find the four D's helpful. Delay lighting up for at least five minutes. Take several deep, slow breaths, drink water, and do something else. So change what you're doing, especially to something active. And help is available. There are medications and support groups that can help us quit. Many communities and programs can support us on this journey. Now we come to the last factor, and as I said at the beginning of the video, it will probably surprise you. There are a number of cancer types, like cervical cancer, lymphoma, and gastric cancer, that have been convincingly linked to infections. In fact, it's estimated that 13% of all cancers worldwide are due to infections, and one of the most shocking statistics comes from Scotland. In Scotland, women who were fully vaccinated against HPV, which is a virus that can cause cervical cancer, they had no cases of cervical cancer whatsoever. However, overall, these seven factors put powerful control into our hands to reduce our risks when it comes to cancer. It really comes down to a set of simple guidelines that you can work through to give you the best odds possible. So overall, limit sun exposure, stay active, eat healthy, avoid alcohol and smoking, maintain a healthy weight, and vaccinate against viruses that are known to cause cancer. Unfortunately though, even if we follow all of those steps, cancer can still happen, but we do have one more powerful tool at our disposal. A key in treating cancer effectively is catching it early. At this stage, it's smaller and it hasn't spread, increasing the treatment options and chances of survival. So how do we catch cancer early before symptoms start? Well, we use cancer screenings. So these are tests that help us find cancer before we feel sick. There are screening programs for breast, colon, cervical, and prostate cancers. And these tests have saved countless lives by finding cancer early. And I'm going to put a link to a guide about the cancer screening recommendations in the pinned comment. But there's still a problem. Right now, those cancer tests that we have, they can only detect a small number of cancers. About 70% of all cancer deaths come from cancers that we don't have good screening programs for yet. But here's the good news. Recent advances promise to radically change this. These new tests use a simple blood sample to look for signs of cancer. They find tiny pieces of DNA or proteins from cancer cells, like a fingerprint that shows that cancer is there. This can help us find many more cancers earlier, even ones that we don't have tests for yet. And one famous example is the gallery blood test. But while I'm excited for the potential of these tests, at this time much more needs to be learned before these types of tests can be recommended for widespread use in people without symptoms of cancer. And it's the same for full body MRI scans. So for example, the American College of Radiology says that there isn't enough evidence to recommend them for people without symptoms. Full body MRI scans, they find non-specific lesions in about 10% of people, leading to further tests and procedures that themselves can cause problems like infections from biopsies or unnecessary invasive operations. And there's no evidence currently that any of that saves lives or extends lifespan. So one famous example of extra testing not saving lives is ovarian cancer. A massive long-term trial looked at using ultrasounds and blood tests to screen for ovarian cancer. Over the 16-year study period, those extra tests, they didn't help people live longer or reduce cancer deaths. Bringing it back though, cancer is a serious threat and we can take strong steps to help lower our risks. By following healthy habits and using the best screening methods, we can avoid cancer more easily than ever. But remember, cancer isn't the only health risk. There are other conditions like heart disease that we also need to watch out for. And just like with cancer, there are tests that can help us find conditions early so that we can take action to stay healthy. So make sure to check out this next video here to discover five simple blood tests that can save your life.